This is the upper lake at Glendalough in the Wicklow Mountains National Park, which is a very popular place to walk. Um, it's about an hour's drive south of the capital of Ireland, uh, Dublin. Um, our walk will bring us uh, along the top of the cliffs that you see here at the southern side of the lake and we'll continue on for a couple of kilometres beyond uh, the end of the lake then we'll cross over and return um, along the path that's on the northern side of the lake which is lower than the, uh, the southern side uh, eventually back to the car park. So you see the car park here at the bottom left of the picture and that's where our walk will begin uh, and we'll walk from there down to the shore of the lake uh, and uh, you'll find this sign just beside the lake shore and uh, there's lots of rules in this national park so uh, you should probably take a moment to study the sign and familiarize yourself with all the things you can and cannot do uh, just beside the sign there's a lovely picnic area which looks out on the lake and um, you know if you just want to come for a quiet picnic this is a, a good place to uh, to have that picnic if you continue on past the sign for a few meters you'll come to this little beach which offers a great view of the lake our walk is going to start on the left hand side, our outward leg of our walk will be along this uh, high ridge you see on the left hand side and we'll be returning on the right hand side of the lake which is a bit lower where the forest is that you can see here. When you're finished admiring the view you can start your walk by following this track which is behind the beach. And then you'll come to a fork and uh, stay to the right of the fork and cross this quaint little wooden bridge. During this walk you'll be climbing several hundred metres and this stairway marks the beginning of your climb. It's signposted for Pool Nass Waterfall and as you climb up these steps uh, there's a nice little stream on your left hand side that you can uh, look down on. After a few minutes of climbing the stairs you'll come to this little viewing area where you can stop and take a breather and admire the uh, cascading water in the waterfall. Actually, it's, uh, it's very interesting that you can see that the water has uh, cut a deep channel in the rocks over the thousands and millions of years that it's been flowing down here. There's lots of different tracks in this national park and each one of these coloured arrows uh, indicates one of the tracks. But today we are following the white arrows uh, all the way around the lake. After you reach the top of the steps, the track continues alongside the river. A few hundred metres on you'll come to a crossroads beside a bridge and take a right turn here. Keep an eye out for this wide sweeping bend because this is where you leave the main track. You veer off through this narrow path on the right hand side that leads into the forest where you see the yellow sign here. This is where we begin our climb up to the Spink which is the name of the cliff that overlooks the lake. It's a well-travelled route, so the park authorities have installed this boardwalk and most of the route is on timber boards, which makes it easier than walking on slippery muck. The climb continues on up for hundreds of steps through the forest until eventually you come to this viewing platform with a stunning view overlooking both lakes and the car park in the middle. Spend a few minutes resting here while you take in the view because there's plenty more climbing to be done. After a while the track flattens out and we come to probably my favourite part of this entire walk. You've got a beautiful view of the lake on your right hand side down in the valley and you can also see uh, on the far side of the lake the track that we will later be walking back along and then of course in the distance you've got the other hills in the Wicklow Mountains. Here and there the track meanders around boulders and just feels lovely and relaxed. It's like a little slice of heaven up here. Before long the climbing resumes again and as you climb up and up the view of the lake just keeps getting better and better. It's a narrow boardwalk, so from time to time you may have to step off of it to allow other people pass you by. But who cares? The view is just so enchanting here. Eventually you come to another viewing platform, and unfortunately it was foggy when we got here, but a magnificent view can be had from here also on a clear day. Not long afterwards you'll come to this fork, 
It's the last one on our walk and it's important that you stay on the right hand side here. Soon afterwards you'll come to the highest point in our walk which you can see here in the distance. The original boardwalk was made from old railway sleepers with nails and wire attached to make, give you a non-slip surface but now they're starting to replace it with pressure treated timber boards which were purpose built for the job and should last for longer than the original railway sleepers. Now that we've passed over the summit the rest of our walk is all downhill from here and we've also reached the end of the lake so the walk continues on towards the valley behind the lake and you can see the stream there in the right hand side that feeds the lake. The boardwalk passes over a stream and then it changes to a granite path so it's a mixture of um, pavement and steps made up from granite blocks which is the stone that's locally found in this area. The track continues on down into the valley and as it does we have a lovely view back along the lake towards the car park where we started from. In years gone by there was mining in this area and here we can see the remains of some of the miners cottages. The path meanders through them and we can see that they were also built from the same local granite stone. Here we are at last, it's the halfway point on our walk. This bridge crosses the stream which feeds the lake and after you cross the bridge you begin your return journey up the northern shore of the lake. So we take a right turn and as we do we're treated to the beautiful view down the valley with the lake in the distance. From here the track descends for several kilometres towards the lake. This is probably the roughest part of the whole walk because the granite blocks the track is constructed from are quite up and down and over and back so you really need to be careful here not to stumble and hurt yourself. Eventually you come to a place known as the Miner's Village which was the main centre of mining in this area and there are several ruined buildings here that you can explore. But first, let's rewind all the way back up the valley because there are some great views along the way that I'd like to highlight. First of all, there's the stream which cascades over many boulders as it descends through the valley. And then of course, there's the beautiful bowl shape of the valley itself, which perfectly frames the meandering path. And who could fail to be impressed by the millions of tons of boulders which line both sides of the valley as if they were sprinkled there by a god. Back at the miners village, just take a moment to contemplate what life must have been like for the miners and their families in this beautiful but also desolate place. After you pass through the miners village, the quality of the road improves a lot and it's smooth and flat. As we approach the beginnings of the lake we can see the forest is around us once again and it seems swimming at this end of the lake is not such a good idea. The path now continues on alongside the lake and if you want you can detour down to the lake shore or you can just continue on the main path. This brings us to the end of our walk and what better way to celebrate than a picnic on the water's edge overlooking all this beauty.